The game of hex is usually played on an 11 by 11 board of hexagons. Two opposite sides of the board are owned by red and the other two by blue. The players take turns placing their pieces on unoccupied hexagons. The first player to connect their opposite sides with a path wins. What makes the game so special? Hex cannot result in a tie. One player must win. You might want to try a few games with a friend. There's a link in the video description with a printable board. You can even both try to lose, but somebody will still win. Hex was first invented by Danish mathematician Pete Hein in 1942 and independently in 1947 by John Nash, who, by the way, never looked anything like Russell Crowe. Some Princeton University students referred to the game as John, supposedly because of the Hex tiles on a bathroom floor, but eventually it became a board game called Hex. So why must someone always win? Suppose every hexagon is filled in. Highlight every edge that separates a blue hexagon from a red hexagon. We also treat the blue and red sides of the board as hexagons. So for example, if there's a red hexagon touching the blue side, we highlight the edges where they meet. A careful examination shows that there are exactly two chains of highlighted edges. This path connects these two corners, and this path connects the other two corners. Each path divides blue hexagons from red hexagons. Because the black chain goes from one corner to another, this means that there is a path of hexagons that wins for one player. Now we just need to show that there's always a chain of highlighted edges that connects two corners. How do we do this? First, we need to understand what happens at the junction where three hexagons meet. Notice that there are eight ways to pick colors for the three hexagons. For any of these combinations, there are either zero or two highlighted edges meeting at the junction. Notice also that each corner hexagon must have a highlighted edge. No matter whether the corner hexagon is colored blue or red, at least one of its edges will be highlighted. Since each junction touches either zero or two highlighted edges, these chains must grow and can't stop, otherwise there would be a junction with only one edge. But where do they go? The chain can't connect back to itself, then there would be an illegal junction with three highlighted edges. The only other option is for the chains at the corners to connect just like we saw before. We now have a chain of highlighted edges connecting one side of the board to the other and therefore a colored path. This argument doesn't work for square grids. Here is a way to make vertical and horizontal barriers so that nobody wins. Also, our argument does not depend on the size of the board, so there must be a winner on this board as well. A fun way to see this hex property in action is to look at a map. Let's label two land boundaries and two water boundaries. We could impose a hexagonal grid on the map and require that each hexagon is either land or water. Then there must be either a way to walk from one land edge to the other, or a way to sail a ship from one water edge to the other. You can see the difficulty. We have to determine whether hexagons containing the Suez Canal are water or land. Well, I'll let you wrestle with that one. Hey guys, our team is excited with the new videos that we're putting together. So come back soon, or even better, subscribe.